Okay, so we are here today with Abigail Wild, author of Shattered Self. Uh, she'll be soon unveiling that novel here. So uh, welcome, Abby. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, so I have a few questions for you. So Shattered Self is going to be coming out relatively soon. Mm -hmm. um, so, so your book uh, tells the tale of a teen girl who's been through some pretty traumatic events. So she's been through um, some severe injuries, PTSD, eating orders, abuse. Uh, those are some pretty heavy topics. So, so what gave you the idea for this this book? Um, well, my son sustained a head injury the summer before his freshman year of school, and. Um, it took him two years to heal from it. And even still, he's a, he's a, he's a freshman in college and he's still having the effects of it. And so he was in bed for two full years in the dark um, before he started to get back to life in 11th grade. When he returned to life, to school activities and things, um, people didn't understand. Um, his personality changed a little bit. I mean, it's going to, if you go through that, um, he changed. Um, he still had problems, still need to wear the sunglasses and things like that because of light sensitivity and did suffer from, um, anxiety, PTSD. And he actually did suffer from anorexia due to the head injury. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I spent a lot of time in different therapy waiting rooms, um, for him. He had to learn how to walk again. He had to learn how his memory needed work, you know, all of this and I sat there and the, the mothers we all kind of got along and started talking to each other and they started sharing their stories about what it was like for their child to go back to school and it's always hard no one ever understands because concussions only last a week right but it's not true all of the time for everybody so from that I kind of wanted to write a book but he begged me not to write it about him so I turned him into a girl and here we are. Larkin was born. And actually, it's kind of strange because I feel like she's my daughter as well at this point. Oh, because Yeah, because I've been writing this for years. But here I am rewriting it again. So, you know, so she feels she feels like she's a part of my family at this point. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's where it was born. Yeah. Characters kind of do that, too. They, they, they become part of the family after a while. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. So, so out of the whole book, what, what feel uh, theme do you feel is the is the one um, you'd most like your readers to take away from the story? For me, it is you, you don't really know what other people are going through, um, what pains, and if someone says they are hurting, believe them. You know, and the other side of the story is is that the kids that bullied him. What we didn't know at the time was that they were going through their own things. You know, and so my book actually goes back and forth um, in point of view from the protagonist Larkin to the antagonist Reagan. And so it's both of their stories in one book because I felt like what these kids were going through was also a story to tell. And it's also something that people don't understand, that children don't act out that way on purpose. And so the whole point is, you know, there's always a reason, you know, you have to get to the bottom of it. You just can't take everything at face value. And so dig a little deeper and just be kind. Right. So, yeah. Those are incredibly important lessons. Yeah. So you write uh, for uh, young adult contemporary novels. So what sparked your interest in this particular genre? Um, I work a lot with teens. Um, I, I've homeschooled my children, and so I do a lot of teaching and such in the homeschool community, both online and in person. And it's always with high schoolers. And, you know, kids that are homeschooled in high school, there's usually a reason, there's usually something going on, or like an activity like ballet or theater that's taken over their lives, and so they're squeezing right. in school. Or, you know, an illness. And a lot of times, there's pain in their eyes and you kind of, you want to understand that and you want to understand them. And right. my whole thing is I want to kind of reach out to them. And so this is for them. This is directly for my students, I think. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. And do you ever have uh, plans to uh, branch out into other genres at all? Or is, is this kind of it? I would like um, to try middle grades. I actually know of a little girl that has hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And so she was born with half her heart. Oh and um, I would love to tell her story. So that's what I'm hoping to do after Shattered Self. And then after that, I have a friend that wants me to write romances, but I don't know if I'd be good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd Wait, love to try. <laughs> yeah, I blush just writing, you know, the kissing scene in Shattered Self. I'm like, oh, I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I probably will stick to middle grades and young adult. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I know you've also directed children's theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do your experiences there influence your writing? Um, a lot of the kids that I work with in the theater have anxiety themselves because theater is the perfect place for kids with anxiety or kids that have a fear of talking in front of other people because they can get that experience about of going out on stage and becoming someone else, but kind of also at the same time facing their fears. Mm -hmm. But since they're the other person on stage it's safer than if it was just them standing there burying their souls. Right. And so, yeah. Um, so I think it, it, it plays along with even like what I said earlier, the homeschool students. Um, you know, I watch them, I talk to them, I get to know them when you're in the theater, especially during tech week, you're with them so many hours of the day. You really, you really get to know them. And so I like to build off of them for, especially my short stories right now. And they totally know if they're an inspiration for a story, I'm like, I'm just telling, telling you right now, I'm writing this, I will change everything, but you're the inspiration. And they get excited by that. And it's okay. You know, right. but yeah, they, they inspire me. They do. Oh, that's so. really nice. That's nice. So you get a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's what you have to watch life. That's what I do. If you're writing contemporary, I just think, I think a lot of times you pull from life and you pull from what you see around you. So you always have to be watching. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's a lot of questions. So <laughs> thank you for your time. Much. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay.